24 hours. Um, I was sightseeing. I stumbled across this park and um, I decided to go on a little hike. There was a hiking trail. Now I probably went about a good mile past where I was supposed to. Like I told you guys before, I have no sense of direction. And then I noticed it's starting to get dark, so I'm heading back, and as I'm heading back, I noticed that my keys were not attached to my jacket anymore. And I freak out. I'm like, oh my god. It's getting dark, I'm in the middle of the woods, and not to mention, I passed this area, and this is what made me turn around, is I got to a place where there's clothes and trash scattered everywhere, clothes hanging up, looks sketchy. I have a couple pictures um, that I'll show you. <laughs> this looks like where somebody would be murdered and not found for days. Like I just kept replaying in my head like weekend hike gone bad or you know or something like stuff like that kept rolling through my mind I was so terrified to be in that area that I was just like my safety is more important than my keys and I don't even know if I'm going to be able to find my way back I, I could hear cars in the distance so I was like okay I know I'm close to a road but it was so thick that I couldn't even get up to the road um, and then I see the top of a water tower so I just headed the opposite direction in hopes that I would come across something, some sort of civilization, and I came up in a different area, but I walked myself back through the camp and back to my car, um, and it was so cold. It was, the temperature was dropping. The park closes at five o'clock, and I'm going over a railroad track. Sorry about all the shaking. So the park closes at five and the guy who runs the area is driving around on his um, side by side. He was letting everybody know that the park is about to close and that we all had to leave. And I told him, I'm, I'm sorry, I lost my keys on the trail. I'm trying to do everything I can. And to top it off, my phone was like on 3% battery. There was this group of people, this lady who was working and she works with special needs uh, people. I guess it was like a little field trip type thing. She was bringing them to see the birds. I was just sitting at the picnic table at the top of the trail, trying to figure out what my next move was. And then they came along. They were just gonna go down the trail just a little bit. But if you happen to see some keys, you please, please grab them. I lost them down there somewhere. In my mind, I'm thinking, I knew I lost them way, way down there, but you never know. I'm on a really rough road, so this is going to be a little uh, bumpy. I'm going to get on the freeway and then I'll uh, finish reporting. Okay, I'm back. I'm jumping on the freeway. That road I was on was terrible and it would have just been a super annoying video. But anyways, where was I? Um, it, was, it was like three girls and like four guys or something. They did everything in their power to help me. They were so, so friendly. They came back up though and they didn't have any luck finding my keys. Um, I was just so thankful that they were even willing to help me because I know that the guy was kind of trying to get us out of there. He was trying to clear the lot. But they didn't leave. They didn't want to leave me by myself. By this time, we're all, everybody's got their phones out. We're trying to call a locksmith and then I realized I don't even have my card. My card is, is on my keychain in a little pocket thing. So there was no way I could pay for a locksmith anyways. I had no money on me. I tried to call AT&T roadside service. They didn't answer. Um, I got disconnected like three times. Rough spot again. My phone was dying. It was, it was at like 1%. They offered me a blanket. They gave me water and a soda and they were just so kind. And um, Sylvia gave me her number and she was checking on me. She was like, any news, any news? She actually called the police department for me and she told them the situation and they at first weren't even gonna send an officer because it wasn't like a, an emergency um, or crime activity. But she was adamant, man. They ended up sending out an officer. Um, it took them a while, it was like over an hour. So she did that for me before she left. Um, she gave me her charge cord, uh, and the guy who runs the place had a charge bank that he let me use. So I got a little bit of charge on my phone. And it was like, it was nighttime at this point and I'm freezing. Uh, he brought me out some hot tea, which I thought was very, very kind of him. We were just sitting there waiting on the officer. Um, I felt so bad. I felt like such a burden because that man lives there. 
and he was waiting outside of his house with me outside in the cold. I was like, you don't have to wait with me, it's okay. But I'm like stressed to the max at this point. Locksmiths were saying over the phone like, there's no guarantee that we can even get that car open because of the make and model of it and the style of it. Um, it's not a typical car that they can just pop right open. And I already know that key fobs are a couple hundred dollars and I don't have any money on me. Anyways, to <laughs> go back to waiting. I was waiting outside of the man's house. Um, he gave me a jacket and some hot tea and I had my phone connected to the charge port. So I'm just sitting there waiting on the, the officer and the guy was like, you know, I don't know how this works. I've never had to use it, but I have AAA and I don't know if they'll come unlock your car if, even though it's not my car, but we can try it. So he called them, but the officer showed up before AAA. The officer was trying to tell me that I could get a hotel room or he could take me into town to a family member's house. And I'm like, look, you don't understand. First of all, I don't have access to my money right now. And second of all, I'm solo. I am traveling solo. <laughs> um, and they just couldn't understand. They were like, well, where do you live? Like, can you help me or not? <laughs> told me, you know, worst case scenario, I can take you to the homeless shelter in town. And I'm like, okay. I'm thinking like, I would rather sleep out under a tree. <laughs> I would rather sleep under a tree here in the park in the freezing cold than go to a homeless shelter because those places are not safe. I've heard stories, um, especially of women going in there, no way. I was already in a bad area. That was the icing on the cake. The two women, they were kind of from that area. Like they were straight up saying like, we don't want to leave you here alone. And I said, what, is it bad? Is it like unsafe? No hesitation. They were like, yeah, it's unsafe. Like, and then the guy who lives there says, yeah, it's not safe. He's been shot at. There's been gang activity out there. And I'm thinking like, what? This is like a beautiful, serene, quiet park. And I'm thinking like, nothing bad's going to happen to me here. The AAA truck shows up and it took some work. I mean, he really had to work at it to get my car unlocked, but he finally did. He had to try a few different methods. The poor guy was just like dripping in sweat. And it's freezing cold outside, but he was dripping in sweat because it was so tedious how to get my car open. And he popped it open and the alarms were going off. And I'm like, it's at night in the middle of this quiet campsite. And there's a lot of campers around. I at least was able to get into my car and the, uh, the guy in charge, he was nice enough to let me sleep there overnight. So I did, I crawled in my car and I changed out of my dirty hiking clothes and um, cleaned up as best I could and I went to bed. Um, over there by the birdcage, apparently there's a rooster somewhere because at five o'clock in the morning, the rooster was crawling. I was like, are you serious? It wasn't even light out, it was still dark. I told myself at the crack of dawn, I was gonna go look for my keys and um, the man, he, I didn't even catch his name, so I keep saying the man. He told me that he was going to help me um, in the morning. And honestly, I didn't, I thought that was very kind of him. He was concerned about my safety because he did say that if you go deeper down the trail, deeper into the woods past the campgrounds, it's not safe. And that's exactly where I was. He wanted to accompany me on the trail to help me find them. But honestly, I mean, he had his family up there. He had his grandbabies with him. And I, I didn't want to <clears throat> burden him or bother him. Um, so at the crack of dawn, I just got up and I went by myself. I left my car door open. My, my door, I just left it open because if I shut it, I was afraid that it wasn't gonna let me back in. Um, my car is funny. Push start cars are funny. Even just getting in and out this morning, I set the alarm off like twice. So I was like, I'm not gonna deal with that again. So I'm just gonna leave it open and pray to God nobody gets into my car and steals anything. My iPad's here, Apple Watch, like everything I own, everything I own is in here. Am I that dirty? Is that, you see what I'm saying? I I went through it, man. So I'm, I'm walking down the trail this morning, early this morning, and I walk all the way down past where I saw those clothes in that trash. Cause I was like, okay, I know I at least made it this far and I'm pretty sure I walked a little bit past that. So I did this morning, I walked past it as far as I could remember going. I was looking everywhere, man. And the brush was so thick and um, I get all the way down the path and I don't see my keys anywhere. I'm praying to God. I'm like looking up at the sky, like God, please help me. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm shut down. I'm just like, 
I'm walking real slow. I have no energy. I've had no food. I got no sleep last night. I'm just like running on fumes. I finally got to the point where I was headed back and I'm like, I'm thinking already like I'm not gonna find my keys. This is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. I'm never gonna find them. Even though it has a bright orange ring on it, like there's just no way, it's just too thick. They're just, they're gone. I, I just told myself they're gone. So I start heading back. I am so discouraged at this point. Um, I'm already planning to call a tow truck company and then just get my car out whenever I have access to my money. And I'm thinking like, I'm probably gonna have to sleep on the streets tonight or somewhere. This is like the reality of what my mind was thinking. But on the trail, on the way back, I, I walked past this lady and her son. They were headed back in the direction where my keys, where I thought I lost my keys. I said, ma'am, if you guys happen to see while you're walking a set of keys with an orange key ring, will you please grab them? I've been searching since yesterday evening for my keys. I've been stuck here all night and I just, I can't find them anywhere. And I lost them on this trail yesterday. It's like, okay, yeah, I'll keep my eye out for them. Uh, I'm still like so discouraged at this point. Like I'm just, I've pretty much given up and I am on my way back. I'm like almost there. I'm like coming up to the end of the trail. I heard this very faint voice in the distance saying, "Found." I heard found your keys. <laughs> my immediate thought was great. I'm so tired and delirious now I'm hearing things because I wanted it so bad. I was, I was imagining my keys right there in front of me, imagining getting back up to the hill and somebody there with my keys, like waiting for me to get back to my car because I wanted it so bad. I was trying to like manifest this to happen. I had pretty much given up, but I was still, I still had some hope. Like I still thought that maybe they would just pop up somewhere and I heard it again. I found your keys but it was so faint and I screamed back. I was like, you found them? Did you find it? Did somebody find my keys? She's like, yeah, are you there? I'm like, yeah, I'm coming. And I start running. I just start running down the trail. I'm like, I'm coming. And uh, I was following her voice and she was at the top of the hill. And she's like, I found your keys, I found them. I saw her like waving. I was like, oh my God. Oh my gosh, you really found them? Like, I couldn't believe it at first. I was like, I, I asked her like two or three times. I was like, you found them? You found them? My eyes just filled with tears. I was so excited and so relieved. I couldn't, like, I thought it was a lost cause. She was like, yeah. She's like, they were in the strangest place. All tangled up in this bush, like just hanging there. I was like, yeah, they were like hooked to my jacket and they must have gotten snagged. I was like jumping up and down. I was like, can I give you a hug? I was so excited. She, like she was grinning ear to ear. She was all excited too. And she's like, I put them over there on your car. And sure enough, man, I looked over at my car and my keys were on the door and I was just, I couldn't have been happier in that moment. I was running, I was smiling, I was so happy. I ran to that guy's house and now it's all, it's all gated. Uh, so I couldn't run like to the door or anything but his daughter was just pulling up and I told her, I was like, if, if your dad's home, please, please tell him that I found my keys. I'm the girl that he was helping last night and he was so kind to me, but he was gonna accompany me on the trail this morning to help me find my keys. I just wanted to let him know that a lady and her son found them for me and I'm good and I'm about to leave. And please tell him thank you so much for everything. And she's like, okay, I will, I will. Oh, there, I'm sorry, there's like so much emotion in this. It's not like I could just get a regular key. I, like, I have a key fob. That makes it so much more complicated. And I just, I did not know what I was gonna do. But I, I got them and I'm back in my car and I couldn't be more thankful. I'm just, I'm so happy, I'm so relieved. I have a headache coming on, I can feel it because I'm dehydrated and I'm hungry. Um, and I, I think just no sleep and all this excitement, but that's what happened. I'm just thankful, that was all God. I was praying. I was asking God to send me angels to guide me to my keys. I mean, all, I was, <laughs> I was desperate. I just wanted to find them so badly. I still can't believe I'm in my car driving right now. Like I seriously, you know when you feel like something is just done, you just kind of like give up? That's how I felt. It started out as such a beautiful, exciting, adventurous trip. I was, I was loving it. I was loving the scenery. I was getting great footage. Um, the weather was beautiful. Like it was just an all around, beautiful start 
to the weekend and then that happened. It, it was just too much. My faith was truly tested. My trust in God was truly tested. And let me tell you, it was not easy. I had faith, but there were moments I lost it for sure. I'm just, I'm thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm about to go into the store and get some food and find something fun and relaxing to do today because I've had enough stress to last me a month. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys soon. Mm -hmm.